Okay, this time we're gonna go over how to do a physical assessment. Um, so you knock on the door, uh, you wanna wash your hands, provide for privacy, uh, introduce yourself. I'm Talina, I wanna be your student nurse today. Um, I'm gonna do a physical assessment, just look you over, check everything out, make sure everything's okay. Can you tell me your name and date of birth? And then you wanna check their allergies. So part of your assessment is um, <clears throat> making sure that they're alert and oriented. So I've already used two things. I've already asked their name and their date of birth. If they answer correctly, that, that gives you an indication. Um, I'm going to also ask maybe a question like, uh, do you know what year it is? Do you know where you're at? Um, do you know who the president is? Um, and, that, and see if that answer correctly. Uh, always remember that you know as soon as you walk into the room, if the patient's looking at you, they're interacting with you, they're following you around the room, that that's a good in indication of uh, their orientation and um, if they're alert. So after I've done that, I'm going to take my pen light out and I'm gonna start, you want to start from the head and move down. So I'm going to look at the hair, look at the texture, look at the skin, look for any nodules or lesions. And then I'm going to, um, we're going to start with the ears. So I look inside, use my pen light, look inside. And then, okay, now look at the other one. And go ahead and put my side rail down. <clears throat> you always want to make sure that the bed is at a, a good working height because you want to protect your, your lower back. Uh, put the rails down so that you can get closer. Um, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to look and I'm going to look for cerumen and look at and see if there's any kind of lesions or anything with the ears. Then I'm going to take my pen light and I'm going to uh, let my patient know what I'm doing. So right now I'm going to check your pupils. So I'm going to be shining a little light in your eye. And so I'm going to turn off the light. I want you to look straight forward. Take your pen light and you're just going to shine it through. And you're looking at the pupils. And you shine it in this one. And what we're looking at is we're making looking for perla. Uh, pupils are equal, round, and reactive to light. Um, okay, can you follow um, my pen light? And you're going to see, make sure that they move at the same time. They accommodate. Okay. I'm going to turn the light back on. Now I'm going to look up your nose. And so what we're looking for is lesions, any kind of polyps, um, deviated septum. Look into their mouth. If they have dentures, you want to take them out. Same thing. Say, ah. Okay. So now we're moving to the neck. We're going to go ahead and move. I'm going to start with the arms. <clears throat> When I'm uh, inspecting the arms, I'm looking at the skin, making sure that they're able to move their arms, looking at the elbows. These are elbows are pressure points. And do the same thing with this arm. And I'm going to check pulses. Remember that you check your pulses at the same time. You want to make sure um, you, you're, the strength of the pulses. You're going to note that. And then you're going to tell your patient, okay, I'm, you're going to give them two fingers. Um, I want you to squeeze um, my fingers as hard as you can. So they'll squeeze, and we're making sure that the grip strength are equal, okay? <clears throat> up here, I'm going to move back up to the chest. I'm going to check my skin turgors. I'm going to just kind of pinch their skin. We're looking for tinting. If there's tinting, that's a good sign of uh, that they're uh, dehydrated. And if this is a woman... You want to make sure that you have provided for privacy. Uh, you don't want to ever leave um, your patient exposed. So I'm going to take my stethoscope. And I'm going to go ahead. And, okay, I'm going to pull this down and listen to your chest and listen to your lung sounds, okay? So whenever I'm listening to the lung sounds, um, you want to start up here. On, on a person, it's going to be right below the clavicle. On the mannequins, it's kind of on the clavicle. Uh, what we're looking for is, is that you know the, the area, okay? So I'm going to listen over here on the, his right side. And you want to move it to the other side because you want to compare the same spot in, in each area. So I listen here, here. And then you've got three spots here. And then you do... On the outside during checkoff we don't expect you to sit there for a long period of time um, we want you to, to verbalize that I would ask my patient to take a deep breath every time I move my stethoscope 
Okay, so we've listened to the lung sounds, and I'm going to go ahead and listen to the apical pulse. Um, so you're going to have to verbalize your landmark, so it's the fifth intercostal space midclavicular line. So on the mannequin, you know, you'd kind of hear, and you would listen, and you would speak, or you would say, I would listen to a full minute. Okay, so done that. Um, on another video, uh, we're going to show you exactly where to listen on the back. At this time, this is where you would sit your patient up, and the instructor, you know, if you need help, um, just tell the instructor, and we'll get up, and we'll help you pull your mannequin up. And then you would go to listen uh, to the back, okay? Um, and we'll show you that in another video. Right now, I'm going to move to the abdomen. So notice I covered the chest back up. I'm going down here to the abdomen, okay? All right. So you always want to listen before um, you palpate. So right now I'm gonna I'm gonna inspect. I'm gonna look and I'm gonna look for the contour. Is it round? Is it is it equal? You know, uh, does how does it look? Um, then I'm gonna go into listening. Now I'm gonna start. Remember you've got four quadrants. So listen here. You got your four quadrants. Um, you would listen until you hear a, a bow, some kind of a vowel noise sound in there. Um, you'd listen up to five minutes before you can say that it's absent. And if you were to say, you know, absent bowel sounds in the right upper quadrant. Okay, so at that time, I'm going to um, listen so now I can palpate a little bit. We're not going to do any kind of deep palpation. Um, if, if there is any kind of tenderness, you would note that. I'm going to cover them back up. Now I'm going to move to the legs. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to make sure that um, you want to ask them about their voiding habits and, and their bowel habit habits. When was your last bowel movement? Um, did you have any problems with it? We're, we're looking to see if they had constipation or any kind of diarrhea. Um, how's your appetite been? And um, have you had any problems urinating? You know, if they're having any burning or any kind of urgency or um, incontinence or if there's like males have dribbling sometimes it's a sign of a prostate problem so we want to ask about those habits okay so I'm going to this leg inspecting the skin the whole time making sure that all the joints move there's no pain tenderness making sure that we're looking at pressure points so we're gonna look at the heels you want to make sure you look between the toes and whenever you get to certain parts of the body you'll put gloves on Okay, so on a real patient, I would have gloves on, but I'm gonna look between the toes. Okay, so that looks good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and expose this other one. We always want to compare to the other extremity. So I'm looking, looking underneath, looking at the heel, looking between the toes. Now I'm gonna uh, check the popliteal um, pulse. Same way that we did on the radial. Then um, we want them to push, push against my hands, pull towards me. We're checking, it's kind of like checking the strength there. All right, so all that looks good. Cover them back up. Now I'm going to, you can ask for the instructor to help you with this too, but I'm gonna raise my butt up. Whenever you're checking off, if, if and, and this is a good example, if you forget something, as long as you remember it during that check off and you don't walk off, it still counts, okay? We don't expect you to be perfect, but, so like I forgot the cap refill. I, did, I had, didn't do it on the hands, so I'm, all you're doing is pushing on the nail beds and you're counting. We want it to do, uh, want it to be less than three seconds. So you're just checking the nail beds here on each hand, on each toe, and then I also forgot for the push and pull on the hands. We want to do it at the same time. So they would push, you know, push on my hands, pull on my hands. Same way we did on the feet. Okay, so we're back on track. So I'm going to lay my patient down 
and you want to tell them uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip you on your side and I'm just going to check out your back look at your back and stuff in, the, in your bottom so here is a moment where you can get one of the instructors to help you but we're just rolling them over remember you've got to um, if, if this is a real person you got to make sure that you protect your head that you don't let them you know hit the side rail so what I'm doing right here is I'm just inspecting the back I'm looking at the buttocks making sure we don't have any pressure ulcers um, if we do find something, we need to be able to describe it. So normally in a hospital setting or nursing home, if they have a decubitus ulcer, we're going to have to get a picture of it and measure it and stuff so that you can make sure that it's being treated and it's getting better. Okay, so roll in here. And then I'm going to go on the other side and roll in to this side because I'm not able to see that part of the, the area. So, make sure you put your rail back up. Okay. All right. So, I would roll my patient over. I'm looking at this part that I couldn't see on the other side, checking the spine here, making sure we have good alignment. And then, at that point, you're, you're done with your physical. So I, I would make sure that I lower the bed, I sit my patient back up, and I would tell me when it's a good, good time to stop, and they'll say, okay, that's, that's good enough right there. Lower your bed, make sure the call light was in the, within reach, you've got your rails up, and then if I, if I have a curtain, I put the curtain back, I would wash my hands, thank you, and let me know if you need anything. I'll be back to check on you, and I believe.